Welcome back to Calcone TV. I'm Nathan, and this is the Mid Market Pulse. So let's get straight to the Mid Market news. The market by lunchtime, the ASX, uh, ASX 200 trades in the red. The Australian market seems to be taking cues from the global market as the benchmark index, ASX 200, traded in the negative territory today. By afternoon, ASX 200 lost 99.70 points and traded at 6,918.10, a deep cut of 1.42%. All sectors traded lower today with energy being the worst performer, followed by IT, materials and others. Corporate Travel Management Limited and IDP, Education Limited, from Consumer Services traded higher today. Resolute Mining Limited and Champion Iron Limited from materials also remained in the top gainers today. European Union carbon permit prices surged to a record high levels of 54 US dollars per tonne on Tuesday and stringent climate checks. The prices reached a US dollars price of 54 per tonne at around 1430 Greenwich Mean Time, the highest since the launch of the trading system in 2005. The prices are ticking up from last year after European Union decided to tighten its carbon emission guidelines. Oil slips from one month highs on rising COVID-19 cases. The Silicon Valley based content platform Netflix Inc has missed out, missed on its guidance forecast for the subscriber base leading to correction in share prices of the company. Netflix added 3.98 million subscribers in the January-March quarter of 2021, taking the total subscriber count to the company of 207.64 million to 2.36 million lesser than 210 million subscribers that it had forecasted at the beginning of the quarter. New IX Limited, the global software company, provided an update on the recent trading environment following its internal quarterly management review. The company reported that the increased customer transitions to SAAS licenses and consumption have impacted its revenue, but offer a considerable business model in the long term. The recent operating environment has lowered near-term upsell opportunities for new IX revenue from new businesses and renewals, which remain as per the expectations. As compared to the last financial year, the newly listed company new I, new NUIX reported strong underlying business performance, coupled with total and average order values and a considerable increase in new customers. NUIX is expecting revenue between 180 million and 185 million Australian dollars. Annualised contract value is anticipated in the range of 168 million to 177 million Australian dollars and EBITDA to remain in between 64.6 million and 66.6 million Australian dollars. NUIX Limited shares declined by 14.004%. Corporate Travel Management Limited reported returning to profit and expects positive underlying EBITDA in the fourth quarterly financial year of 21, led by UK and Europe and ANZ regions. The domestic demand is strengthening in the ANZ region, with the total client activity of last week jumping to 85% of the financial year 2019 booking levels. New Zealand stands out in this, with more than 160% of trading last week as compared to the financial year of 2019 booking levels. Corporate travel management is also witnessing positive signs of recovery in the US. In the UK and Europe, despite the lockdown restrictions, essential travel client wins are contributing to profitability. In the financial year of 2019, nearly 70% of revenue was generated from the UK and US. Hence the recovery in these regions is significant for the company. 
Corporate Travel Management maintains a strong balance sheet with net cash of nearly 105 million Australian dollars on the 31st of March with an undrawn line of credit of 100 million pound and it has no debt. Corporate Travel Management remains well positioned for the likely industry consolidation. Corporate Travel Management's value proposition enhanced and it's all set to be a bigger business in the post-COVID era. Corporate Travel Management Limited shares gained by 4.361%. Split at Payments Limited growth accelerated in the first quarterly of the financial year of 21, with merchant sales volume growing robustly to 82 million US dollars, an increase of a whopping 247%. Year over year, gross revenue is up by 292%. Year over year to 2.7 million US dollars. The global payment solutions provider split it, added new brands to its merchant list, and total merchants stood at 2.2 thousand. Split it payments boasts of an impressive client list that includes APM, Monaco, XUPES, Polly and Bark, Google, Giant Bicycles, Hastons, Findex, Matebike, Super 73, House of Hackney and Open Shop. Total shoppers increased by 70,000 and totaled 0 0.5 million. In addition to the 75 million US dollars closing cash balance, Splitter has Goldman Sachs a 150 million US dollars receivables warehouse facility to support 800 million Australian dollars to the annual MSV. Split at payments shares dipped by 5.918%. Invictus Energy Limited shared an update on the activities of its 80% owned and operated Kabora Bassa Pro project in Zimbabwe. Invictus stated that it has awarded Polaris Natural Resources Inc. to provide acquisition services for its first 2D seismic programmed in the Kabora Bassa Basin. Polaris has conduced more than 1,000 seismic projects since 1996 and launched the first low-impact seismic crew into Africa in 2008. The proposed seismic survey will be done with a minimal environmental footprint and utilise existing roads and tracks wherever possible. Invictus Energy Limited shares declined by 2.632%. Shares of Latitude Financial Group finally made their stock market debut with the ticker LFS on the third attempt, surging 15% on its listing on the Australian Securities Exchange on Tuesday. Latitude stock opened trade at 2.96 Australian dollars a piece against an offer price of 2.60 Australian dollars and hit a high of 2.99 Australian dollars delivering a stag profit of 15% to its initial public offer, investors. With its share price spiking to 2.99 Australian dollars, Latitude's market valuation surged to nearly 3 billion Australian dollars. Post-listing, Latitude shares were trading 8.84% higher at 2.83 Australian dollars. The trading session of 20th of April 2021 ended with Latitude recording 3.846% increase at $2.70 Australian dollars. During the day's trade, the stock hit a low of 2.76 Australian dollars and the highest it reached was 2.99 Australian dollars. There was a spurt in buying as 4,207,932 shares changed hands over the counter. Latitude Financial Group shares remained constant at 2.700 Australian dollars. BTB Information Services company Kika Limited released its quarterly third financial year 2021 update for the period that ended 31st of March 21. Despite the ongoing COVID-19 impact on global corporate onboarding activity, Kika reported a record total revenue of 645,000 Australian dollars, up 10% as compared to the previous corresponding period and 3% on last quarter. The March 2021 revenue was the best monthly revenue registered by Kika. It improved by 39% to 274,000 Australian dollars on PCP. Enterprise annual recurring revenue or minimum contract value increased by 13% on the previous quarter. 
Enterprise revenue in March 21 improved by 39% on PCP. Kicker won four new clients during the quarter. Kicker entered into new markets ahead of the traditional banking and payment sectors. Kicker Limited shares remained unchanged at 0.059 Australian dollars. That's it for today's Mid-Market Pulse. We'll get back to you shortly.